Hello everyone, welcome to back my channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before starting the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. At Crimson Lights, Summer updates Phyllis on getting a judge to stop Kyle from taking Harrison to Paris. Phyllis asks how Kyle took it. Summer says he's freaking out because he's realized he can't do whatever he wants when it comes to their son. Phyllis is relieved for her. Summer tells her mother none of this would be happening if she hadn't listened to her. She goes on about her great suggestions. Phyllis warns her to document everything and always go through the courts. She'll always be in her corner. Summer appreciates her. Phyllis tells her daughter she went through a lot and deserves this outcome, but she has to ask, isn't your heart breaking just a little bit? Summer insists she's not upset at all. She won and Kyle lost. Phyllis says, and Harrison? How do you think not going to Paris will affect him? Summer scoffs that the boy didn't even know what Paris was until his head was filled with adventures by Claire. She went on about how he was excited for the trip. Summer pulls out the drawing Harrison made her, wishing she could share in the fun. Phyllis says Claire obviously gave it to her to make her feel bad. Summer says it worked, she feels guilty but she should be the one doing fun things with him, not some nanny. Do you think I'm being unreasonable? Phyllis says it doesn't matter what she thinks, only what Summer feels. She feels Kyle is trying to squeeze her out of Harrison's life while he's jumping into bed with Audra Charles either literally or figuratively. He needs to understand his actions affect other people. Phyllis warns that he'll retaliate so she needs to figure out next steps. Summer has no idea what he'll do. I don't know Kyle anymore. Not this version of him at least. He's so wrapped up in what he wants and everyone around him has to fall in line. It scares the hell out of her. Kyle enters the Abbott house where Claire and Harrison are reading a book about Paris on the sofa. Harrison is bubbling over with excitement about going up the Eiffel Tower. Kyle tells his son they won't be able to do it this time. He's not going to be able to take him and Claire on the trip. Harrison asks if he did something wrong. Kyle says of course not, it's just a business trip and he'll be busier than he thought. Claire talks of the things they can do in Genoa City and tells him that now his mom won't have to miss him so much. Harrison was sad his mom couldn't come. I guess it's oak if we don't go to Paris. Kyle hugs him and looks gratefully at Claire. Kyle tells Harrison how well he's handled this and promises that they'll go to Paris another time. Harrison asks if Claire can come. He says of course. Harrison asks if his mom can come too. Kyle says they'll talk about it later. The kid is sent off to the kitchen and Kyle thanks Claire for helping him out. He laments that Summer doesn't want him happy unless she's around. It's always about her. Claire shushes him so the boy doesn't hear. Kyle sure Summer will bedmouth him and complains that Harrison is disappointed thanks to her. He's nervous about what she'll try to pull while he's away. What I need is somebody here who can keep an eye out, somebody I can trust. Claire asks, you mean me? Kyle is desperate. Summer is liable to pull anything while he's gone. He just needs her to let him know if she does. At Chancellor, Billy pulls Lily into the office to look at the new company logo he had drawn up. She looks, and it says Abbott in bold letters over Chancellor. She says it sends the statement that Abbott is driving the bus and Chancellor is the passenger. She argues that Chancellor is the most established company. They don't sell cosmetics there. Abbott Chancellor means nothing to no one. Billy disagrees. Lily's not surprised. Bill crows about them having their first disagreement as partners. It's exhilarating, isn't it? Lily gives him an exasperated look. Lily agrees that this is a new start for Chancellor, but she wants the transition to be smooth. The Abbott name isn't bringing anything of substance, and it should be more subtle in the logo. She thinks it should be Chancellor Abbott. Billy says, fantastic. Consider it done. Nikki finds Victoria looking at Victor's portrait in his office. She asks how it feels to be back. Victoria's ambivalent, but she'll get over it. Nikki asks if she's just doing this for her father. 
Victoria asks if she's given any thought to Victor's proposal that she take over Chancellor, if he's able to take it from Billy and Jill. Nikki says the word if isn't in his vocabulary. She spent a lot of hours last night wondering what Catherine would think. Victoria thinks she'd rest easy knowing Nikki was in charge. Nikki needs something from Victoria before she decides. If Victor takes Chancellor, Billy will take a big fall.